Hi everyone, this is John Garrett from hypertransitory.com and this is going to be part three of my tutorial on uh, 3D character creation in Daz Studio and Photoshop for uh, my series True Tales of the Saurian Order. And if you saw the first two parts, uh, we talked about loading the props and loading the model and um, then we talked about setting the colors and the materials on the props to make this image. And now we're going to talk about uh, some of the posing and hopefully get to the shadowing in this uh, in this part. So let's get over to Daz Studio. And as we see, um, before I kind of talked about um, going through the surfaces and and for each each surface that you have here, you have to take the diffuse and the specular down, and you have to load any textures that you find into the ambient. And that's going to give us this. And I've went through and I've done that with every every surface that's here and when you see the render that you're going to get out of that and I have one here this is what the render looks like so that is very very flat and you know it's not very well modeled uh, with light or anything and that's what we want in this case that's the way I do it and uh, I'm going to continue showing the um, the procedure that I use to do this um, so we're going to go to what we need to do to pose this character to get our first main render. Now, I mentioned in the first video that a lot of times um, people like to use what's called the Active Pose tool, which is this bones icon up here. That's going to let me grab on this character and I'm going to be able to move, um, just move her around and, you know, adjust the pose. Now, I believe I mentioned two in the first one. I don't really like doing this because, as you can see, when I grab one thing, other uh, parts of the character are affected, and I don't really care for that. Um, I'd rather just work on one piece at a time and not really worry about the rest of this. So, I mean, some people are very good at it, and they have an intuitive grasp of what it takes to do this. Now, for me, I'm going to go ahead and undo that because I like to work on things one piece at a time really and so uh, what I do instead of using the active pose tool I keep my parameters open and you know if I want to just work on one thing you know with the active pose tool you've got bending twisting and, and side to side going on all at the same time and sometimes I don't want to do that actually I really rarely ever want to do that I just want to do one thing and see what that does so I might, if I want to work on her thigh, I might just go ahead and bend that the other way here, bend it up, and I might go down to the shin or and and you know take that down, you know one piece at a time. So I'm not affecting the rest of the model, and I can just do what I need to do. And usually, you know that sort of thing works out better for me. It may not work out better for you, but but uh, I mean at least you know you've got the active pose tool if you really want to deal with that. And, you know, I literally go through, and it might be considered to be kind of painstaking, but um, I just like working that way. And it's easy for me to, you know, really tell what's going on and what needs to be done. You know, if I want to, um, you know, really take it a piece at a time and adjust it, you know, with really fine movements, then I can do that sort of thing. Now... In this case, obviously, since I've made the picture, I already, I have the pose, I've saved it. And as I showed in the last video, how to load those presets and, and load up your, your script. So when I made the last file and I got the pose that I wanted after, you know, a lot of tweaking around and, and um, doing all this, I saved that pose. So I'm going to go ahead and show that now where I'm going to select the model. And then I'm going to go back to my script folder. Um, to find that pose. It's in here somewhere. There it is. It's character pose. So when I load that up, you know, this, this is the pose from the image. And as you can see, it's, it's a bit of a different angle. And that's because, um, you know, I had a 
widescreen aspect set up and I had a different camera angle. And what I did at that point, I actually saved the camera preset as well. So um, what I can do in that case, I'm going to go, you know, I have my camera set up here. Just make sure I got my camera selected. But uh, I can now go to my render view there. And that's that's more matching the angle of what we what we need. So there we go. But I need to set up my in my render settings. I need to get my correct ratio uh, dimensions of my render. And what I had before was a widescreen angle. And I had it at 1280 by 720. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Now there is what I had before. And you can see that's that's pretty much it right there. So it's good to go ahead and save those if it's a, if it's a really dramatic camera angle and you want to make sure you keep that. Um, go ahead and save it. But now I don't want to really mess with this camera. I just want to be able to keep it there and, and uh, not screw with it. So I'm going to make another camera up here. Just leave it as camera one. I'm going to apply the default settings. I'll go ahead and accept that. So we can see in the viewport that there's a new camera there now. I'm going to go ahead and choose camera one. So that's looking straight on. That's my default view, which is fine. Uh, that's what I wanted. I mean, I can go back to my render cam when it's time to render. Now, usually I named it that. I, you can go in here and you can uh, click on it and you can name your camera whatever you want just to help you remember. And I got my aspect ratio. I got my render uh, field set up here in my renders uh, box here. And I have the pose, as you can see, that even the facial features are there. Now, one thing about the facial features, the facial, uh, you know, posing and, and modeling, that's, that's what we call morphs in DAS Studio. Now, um, the thing about that is you've got some basic options that you normally have with, you know, the, the basic Victoria model. Now, um, most of the elite characters, this is an elite character that I loaded in the first preset, in the first video, I mean, and you can see that uh, what I have here is called Morphs Plus Plus. And normally every elite character and a lot of different versions of characters are going to need these morphs so that they can, you know, transform into that character. And a lot of times when you're going to apply those, you have to go to your content folder. I'm going to go back up here. And you have to find where that's all at. And usually it's in the poses folder. So if I go down to Victoria 4, and we can see that I've got a folder here called Morph Injections. Now, here's Morphs Plus Plus. And what's going to happen is when I double click on one of these icons, I'm going to get a slider over here in my Morphs area. So then I'll be able to affect whatever is in there, you know, the abs, or if I want that expression, uh, you can see here there's expressions over here, um, different uh, faces, you know, options for the breasts. And I can, I have all kinds of brow, you know, eyebrow sort of morphs. Now I have to go through and load these one at a time. Now, a lot of times when you get um, a, a morph where you get a character, you might get a file that's called a power loader. And what that's going to do is going to load up all these morphs all at once. So you don't have to go through and double click each one and get it loaded in there and, and go down the whole list. It's a long list to go through. But I had to do that because I've never got the power loader to work correctly in my setup in either DAS2 or DAS3. It always manages to freeze my computer or, or crash DAS or something. So I've always avoided the power loader. And if you don't, if you can't get it to work either, then you're going to have to go through each one of these icons and double click the ones that you want and get it loaded in there so you can get a corresponding slider over here to adjust the uh, the options you want. So, I mean, as you can see, you know, I can I can do all kinds of things over here. But but uh, I mean, right now I've got my original pose that I wanted there. And. Um, I mean, you have morphs for 
the body size and, and the shape too, depending on what you want to deal with. Now, it can become kind of a hassle to have to remember all that stuff. So again, you can save the character preset and you can save all that stuff if you want to, you know, keep it for later in case of a crash or in case, you know, you move computers and you, you lose that character and you have to rebuild the character again. You can save all that stuff. Now, um, one of the things that is is kind of important about those morphs is that uh, um, a lot of times, sometimes you kind of forget <laughs> uh, what's going on in here. And and uh, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually take a screenshot of it and if I forget to save it or something, just in case, just in case I, you know, I want to have a built-in redundancy or something. And, you know, I have a kind of small monitor here, but those of you with larger monitors, you can probably get all these things open, take a screenshot. And, you know, what if your script doesn't work or you lose the script or something, too? You can, if it's very important, you can then print that out and you can save it. And I thought I read something about a, a script or a plugin somewhere that that might print out all these. But uh, that was on the forums a while ago. May not be possible, but it would be nice if it were. So, um, I mean, that's kind of the deal with the posing now. When I go through and I finish my pose, when I got my pose finished, let's go to my render camera view. So that's my final pose right there. And when I am done with that, I'm going to take one render and I'm going to make sure again I'm in cartoon mode. That uh, this is going to be my main that I'm going to build on in Photoshop. And when I'm ready to render this thing, sometimes you might render it and you get a, uh, you know, you might get what's called anti-aliasing. You may get some jaggies around the edge of it or something. Now you can affect that uh, by going in your advanced and I believe these pixel samples here, you know, kicking these up is going to smooth that out for you. But also it does increase your render time. So I found that instead of doing that, I'll just go to my background color. And when it's time to render, I'll change it to black. So instead of giving me this color jaggies, you know, at least it'll appear to be part of a black outline, which is what I want for my for my particular style. As you can see here, I mean, a lot of it has you no know, black outline around it. So that works for me. And that's just the way I do it. But if you know, if you have other methods or if you need to kick that up, just be prepared for a little bit of a more of a wait when it's time to render. As we can see here, um, I mean, I got 16 by nine here. Let's just take a look and see if I just change this to 500 accept that and let's see what we get out of a render now and when you uh, you're seeing the black background here but when you were to go and put this in Photoshop or something th that background is going to be transparent um, depending on on what you save it as you can you can save as a couple different options when it's time but normally you're going to want to use a PNG uh, format because that's going to give you the background without um, you know having any loss to it and it also keeps the file size down a little bit so here's my render just a small one and to save that I would go to save last render and it's gonna pop up you know I've got a couple options here you know this is not gonna give me any transparent background because JPEG doesn't support that uh, PNG is what I always use TIFF you know probably a larger file size but it's very compatible with everything some tips have transparent background I've never saved tip out of here because I don't need it BMP I would avoid at all costs that's you know large file size and just not very good and this DSI I've never used uh, I think that's a, a part of another DAS situation there that I don't really care for so I don't deal with that but um, anyway I would save as a PNG then I would this all this would be transparent around here now, next time I'm going to talk about, after I've got my main render, I have to then save another file of this, and I'm going to show how I set up my shadows um, in order to get some detail going on in here and bring out, flesh out the character more. So that should be coming up pretty soon. Uh, stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.